Maurizio Pochettino is speaking like a man that knows he's going to get fired at the end of the season because there is no way you're allowed to talk about your boss like that and keep your job. Maurizio Pochettino's explosive comments about the Chelsea sporting director are actually shocking. I can't believe he said what he said. I'll cover that. Barry Ashile, was it a penalty or free kick? What should the goal have been disallowed? I was a little bit reactionary after the game and I'm going to explain to you what my real opinions are now because I've seen it a few times. I think I may have been one of those tip fans. Oh my God, we got robbed. And then Benjamin Sesco. Benjamin Sesco is linked to Chelsea again. Fabrizio Romano saying something very interesting. And I think these rumors are concrete let's get into the three news i'm gonna ask you guys for a massive favor now hit the like button subscribe to the channel because we're on our way to 35k and we need to hit that quickly and one more thing in the past i've made videos on victor Osimen and victor gurkares where i covered them in detail strengths and weaknesses and it was kafka's the scout do you guys want me to do one on benjamin sesco because i've watched quite a bit of the player recently and i feel like i've got a good idea what his strengths are what his weaknesses are and i can do a whole video just breaking it down head to toe for you. Let me know in the comment section if the interest is there and you comment, I will do it. If not, there's no need for me to do it. Let's move on with the news. So Maurizio Pochettino said four key things. One, after the game yesterday against Villa and three before. We'll get into this thing he said after the game. After the game, he said this. He said, we need to assess the players at the end of the season and decide what we're going to do in the window in the season. It is important. The owners, directors and us I don't know who us is, but it's very nice that he's putting some accountability out there and he's given us some transparency of what's going to happen in his end of year review. Look, it is not a foregone conclusion that Maurizio Pochettino is going to stay even if the owners want him to stay. Because his comments are absolutely wild and for me, this is important. Mopo is in a situation where he has got the Chelsea job and he's not getting Chelsea level treatment. If you told him five years ago, Giza, you got the Chelsea job, he would have been like, oh my God, guaranteed world-class players, moving after titles, and more importantly, this is a legacy-defining moment for him. Alternatively, what has he got? Couple of cup finals, young players galore, and more importantly, a project that is getting his reputation in the mind. Like, he looks incompetent in setting up a structure. Every week he's getting criticized. Every week he's getting questioned. And this is alarming, I'm not gonna lie to you. So it's very nice to see that he's coming out and putting people accountable, but it's interesting. Before the game, he was asked something very interesting. So look, the way the press conference happens is we see the broadcaster stuff, the stuff I usually cover, and then we see the stuff that is written by the newspapers and there's an embargo. The embargo basically means what's said in this room can't be released until this point so that newspapers have content that isn't basically on TV, so that they have extra content to pull out and newspapers stay relevant. And this was interesting. They asked him, do you feel like you need to prove yourself? He goes, no, yeah, I feel like it's only me that needs to prove yourself. Other people need to prove themselves as well, the organization. But at the moment, it only looks like it's me. That is the first sign of Maurizio Pochettino distancing him himself from this job. He's basically highlighting, it's them, man, not just me. You need to remember that they're involved as well. At the moment, he feels like he's proven himself, not them. And for me, that is very interesting because when Maurizio Pochettino leaves, when any manager leaves, PR starts, right? Oh, it wasn't my fault. My hands were tied for this. Oh, the manager's training was crap. That's why the team was bad. This is the first sign of him putting up those barriers to say, I am not at fault here. The second thing he said that was very interesting for me was, I don't make the decisions here. I don't have the keys. And this is very opening. Look, what do we know about Maurizio? He's the coach. Maurizio makes no decisions on what players come in. So when Maurizio moans about, I don't have experience, he's the wrong person to be moaning because he's like us. He wants more players that have been there and done that. It's the sporting directors that have the keys. It's the owners that have the keys. So when Maurizio says, I don't have the keys, I don't make the decisions, we need to believe him on that. And the fact that he's so publicly saying that after there have been reports telling him to basically stop being so vocal and airing out the laundry of the team, it's wild to me. It's absolutely wild. It's very interesting how he's taking this stance. The final thing that was very interesting to me is he's not talking to the owners anymore. It's been two months since he's spoken to the owners and the two months is since the, in my opinion, the Carabao final. We know after the Carabao final, we received text. Since that point, he said he's not spoken to any of them and he still believes at this moment in time he's got their support. They've asked him, do you believe that you have their support? He goes, I don't know how to answer that question. 
I don't know if I have their support. We're not on talking terms at the moment. They're not texting me. And for me, this is absolutely mind boggling because evidently they were texting him before. Evidently there was a relationship there. Evidently Maurizio Pochettino knew he had the security of the board. And what's even more interesting is we've been hearing stories about. We know that certain man on the board believed that, hey, I didn't hire him, you hired him. Oh yeah, I didn't hire him, you hired him. And there's finger pointing. We also know that Iqbali is heavily in favor of making this work and any decision that happens will have to have go through Iqbagad Iqbal because he is the top dog. I've explained this before, I'll explain this one more time. Chelsea is broken up into four sections. 60% is clear late capital, Iqbali's in charge of that. There's Vice, there's another guy and there's Bowley. Bowley only owns like 13% of Chelsea and this whole narrative that Bowley is the big decision maker, nah, he's the PR face of it. He's the face of the club. He is not the one making all the big decisions. He has a, he has a say, but he ain't the big top dog. The top dog is Iqbali, 60% owner. But after these comments, the team on the pitch played well. And I'm very positive about what we saw. Because what I'm going to say to you is, Aston Villa played Chelsea four times this year. I think Chelsea were the better team three of the, or three of the four. I think the first game, if Gusto doesn't get sent off, we beat them. I think the second game, where it was an FA Cup tie at Stamford Bridge, we drew. It was an all right game. At Villa kind of edged it. We whooped their ass at what's it called, as, uh, at Aston Villa, where Villa Park. And then, when yesterday's game, we absolutely battered them. We should have won the game. They had their opportunities. Yes, they scored and they punished us. However, we had more possession. We had more chances created. We were absolutely, in the end, I called it robbed. We weren't robbed. Because when we're being fair, when we're being open, when we're being honest, that is Shile's foul was a foul, man. And a lot of people can say, Alex, what are you talking about? He was soft. I, I stand by what I said. He weighs 110 kilos. He went forward like a sack of potatoes. He exaggerated the fall. And for me, it's infuriating. However, and this is the big thing, Barry Chile sees the balls coming down, right? He knows he can't go through Diego Carlos, so what's he going to do? Nudged him. That nudge gave him the extra half a meter to get the ball and cross. Like, we need to be honest, we need to be fair. A lot of people called me out on it, a lot of people agreed with me, surprisingly. However, we need to be honest, man. Like, on this platform, after the game, I'm emotional. That's why you lot come here often. And the reason you come here is I entertain you, I give you logic, and I also give you off the cup thoughts. So first things I thought, then when I go away and I watch highlights of the game, I kind of go, you know what? This was a bad decision. I was wrong here. We're all wrong at times. So it is frustrating, it's annoying, but it is what it is. It it wasn't it wasn't meant to be. We get it, we'll get him another time. The final bit of news is regarding Benjamin Sesco. Fabrizio Romano has once again come out and basically reiterated that Sesco is available. He's got 43 million pounds uh, on his head top. That's the release clause. He, he also said that Chelsea are heavily interested. He name dropped Chelsea in it. And you know, nothing comes out from Fabrizio's mouth without a meaning. We know that Fabrizio Romano is heavily influential and we know he works with clubs. It's public knowledge. When you're that big, you're an excellent mouthpiece for football club. Like you are, he's going to make a lot of money and he's most probably going to say a lot of stuff because it's information, right? He's a reporter. His job is literally to talk to people, them to tell him stories and him to report it to us. He's a reporter. I don't know why people get angry. Oh, Fabrizio works for the clubs. Yes, he works for the clubs. Yeah, he's built up a platform to the point where clubs believe that he's an asset to have. Well done, Fabrizio. I respect it. But what I also will want to say is, Sesco is a very interesting player. Do I think Sesco is great? I think Sesco is a good player. I really do. Do I want Sesco at the club? I would prefer someone with a bit more experience. I would. Because I think Benjamin Sesco at this moment in time at Leipzig, he's just started breaking into the team. He's just started starting. And more importantly, his numbers are inconsistent. He really reminds me of the way Kai Havertz would lead the line in the sense that he's not a number one goal scorer. He's not the shooter. He's the guy that's the second or third option. Like if those of you that watch basketball, you know what I mean. Like there's the guy, then there's the second guy, and then there's the third guy. And when the teams lose, you don't blame the third guy. You blame the first and second guy. And 
Sesco can't be to blame when we lose because we're meant to have more quality. If Sesco is your number one option, you got a problem, man. Like, you really do. And this is the problem at Chelsea at the moment. I said this today. I was speaking to somebody that watches my videos. He DM'd me and we were talking about football and become good friends, actually, now. And we were saying how... Chelsea have got too many third options. And by what I mean by that is, Nkunku was meant to be the main guy. Sterling was meant to be the second guy. The third option was meant to be a Palmer, a Noni, a Jackson, a Mudrick. Someone developed, yet they're not. You know what I mean? Yet, uh, Nkunku has basically been injured the whole year. Sterling has regressed and Palmer has stepped up massively and the step up massively is meant to be a bonus, however, it's keeping us afloat. So bringing in Sesco for me is a little bit of a problem. But like I said earlier on, if you don't want me to make a detailed video of the strengths, the weaknesses of Benjamin Sesco, please let me know. If you don't know what I'm talking about about those kind of videos, here are two links. Here's the Victor Jokeres video and here is the Victor Ossiman video. I literally break it down in nice detail so that you lot can enjoy it, you lot can understand it, and you know what kind of player we're getting, because there is too many people talking about players that they don't watch, and it frustrates me because you set standards that are not realistic, and then when we get those players, that oh my god, we really need to be doing better, we need, he's not good enough, well big man, if you watched him, you would have known, let me know your thoughts, hit the like button, subscribe, and go watch these two videos, bye.